John F. Kennedy International Airport, more commonly known as simply JFK, is one of three primary airports serving the New York City metropolitan area. The airport handled over 60 million passengers in 2019, making it one of the busiest airports by passenger volume in the United States and the busiest international air gateway into North America. Located in Howard Beach, Queens, the facility boasts six terminals, four runways, and many more support buildings and staff. While you may be familiar with the concourses, gates, and even views of the runways, we wanted to know what is it like behind the scenes, and who are the people that help keep JFK running? In this episode, we go behind the scenes and give you an exclusive look at the inner workings of JFK Airport. This is Airport Uncovered. JFK. JFK International Airport is comprised of six terminals, serving more than 70 airlines which fly to hundreds of destinations across six continents. Terminals are laid out in a loop, connected by road and rail via the air train. At present, the current terminals are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 and 8. You may notice there's currently no Terminal 3 or 6. This is the product of decades of merging and redeveloping of buildings, and no doubt is set to change again in the coming years as the airport continues to renovate and expand. We start our tour at Terminal 1. Owned and operated by a consortium of four international carriers, Air France, Lufthansa, Japan Airlines and Korean Airlines, Terminal 1 houses 10 gates several remote parking locations, and services 23 international carriers. We spent the day with ramp manager Steve Abraham to understand what his job entails and how this building operates. On a daily basis, we would have between 40 and 50 flights a day. Uh, at the moment, we're, in, we're probably at 18 to 20 flights per day as traffic is continuing to increase with uh, people wanting to travel again. I am uh, in charge of scheduling, gating, making sure that uh, I coordinate all the airline schedules to ensure that we have ramp and gate space for them. I have a staff of nine ramp controllers who work for me who are responsible for the movement of the airplanes both in and out of the ramp. Now from the passenger perspective, this terminal has the benefit. We thermal image all of our passengers prior to going through security just as an added layer of comfort for all our passengers to know that everybody on their plane has been temperature scanned. Terminal 1 has 10 gates. At the moment, we're in the longer of the two departure corridors. We have seven gates down here. These are also all of our A380 gates are in this section of the terminal. Presently, we're probably doing throughput of about five to 6,000 passengers a day which is a small percentage of what we used to do. There were days pre-COVID that we would do 25,000, 20 to 25,000 passengers through here on a daily basis. We're not done with our tour at Terminal 1, and we'll catch up with Steve again in a little bit. But traveling airside to watch landings and departures up close, we also got an inside look at how the Port Authority does its part in managing operations at JFK. A joint venture between New York and New Jersey, the Port Authority was established in 1921. But how does it fit into the complex workings at JFK? The Port Authority is a major infrastructure agency that covers the entire region of the New York and New Jersey metropolitan area. So it covers northern New Jersey, it covers New York City, and we have multiple facilities. We operate the tunnels and bridges that cross the Hudson River. We run a commuter railroad, and we operate the three major airports in the New York, New Jersey area. On the air side, the Port Authority is really being sure again in terms of vehicles, in terms of upkeep. Runways have to meet certain standards. That's the responsibility of the Port Authority. The lights on the runways have to meet certain standards. It's a split responsibility amongst uh, not only the terminal operators in the Port Authority, but the airlines, contractors who provide many of the services, but the overall orchestration in terms of being sure 
that the airport is functioning in all respects rests with the Port Authority. While Port Authority manages many ground ops at JFK, Terminal 1 oversees its own departures and arrivals. But what exactly does that look like? I became an air traffic controller when I was 29 years old and came to Kennedy in the early 90s and stayed here until I turned 56, which is mandatory retirement age for all air traffic controllers. About 11 months after I retired, the folks at Terminal 1 thought that I could help manage their ramp, given that I had such a good understanding of how air traffic flows in and around this airport since I spent more than 20 years here moving the airplanes around the airport. So this is the ramp control tower here at Terminal 1. Well, operations center is one floor below. Uh, our ramp controllers work from up here, along with our ground service provider coordinator. We only have one ground handling company for all our airlines. So from the airline's perspective, if the station manager has an issue with baggage, if the station manager has an issue with cabin cleaning, with catering, with security, they'll always come through us and we're the conduit to the ground service provider. It's part of our model here at Terminal 1. The terminal manager on duty has multiple screens in front of him at the moment. He's looking at the baggage belt system, the intakes, the laterals where the bags, where passenger drops off a bag, it gets fed through our baggage system and then it gets sent out to laterals down below where our ground handler will pack the bags into the ULDs before they're loaded onto the airplane and the baggage system actually scans the tags that you see placed on your bag and we'll know which lateral to send the bags to. So all the Saudi bags will end up on one lateral and all the Turkish bags will end up on another and then they're packed, loaded into the containers and stuck on the bottom of the air, stuffed into the bottom of the airplane. This is our gate plotting software. It is initially fed in with estimated or scheduled time of arrival and scheduled time of departure. It automatically updates based on movements from the airplane. So we will have a good picture of what gate all the airplanes are going to, what time they're supposed to push, when the next arrival is supposed to go into that gate. So we always maintain a level of situation awareness up here because you don't want to push an airplane back when there's an arrival just about to come in because it's obviously, you don't want to cause your own ramp congestion. While the tower at Terminal 1 works to minimize delays and missed connections for its human passengers, there's another terminal at JFK that specifically caters to passengers of another variety. We took the short drive to meet the staff and answer the question, what is the ARC? Welcome to the ARC at JFK. This is JFK's animal reception terminal. Hi, I'm Beth Schutte. I'm the managing director of the ARC at JFK. The ARC at JFK opened on January 2nd, 2017, and we comprise 50 employees. JFK is one of three major ports of entry for the United States. The other two are in uh, Miami and Los Angeles. So that means that all of the different federal agencies that regulate animals uh, are present here at the airport 24 hours a day, just as we are, to service any kind of needs with clearing animals or um, exporting animals. If we hurry up, we might get a horse. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good, how are you doing? So these horses today will be departing on a flight to Liège in Belgium and from there they could be dispersed all throughout Europe. Some of them go for competition, some go for breeding. You think about getting on a plane yourself, you know you have to have your identification and you have to make sure that you have your luggage and your security screening. When you're moving an animal, it doesn't typically move with you, <laughs> unfortunately. Animals, if they're being shipped as cargo, go in a separate area of the airplane. They have to be delivered to a completely separate area of the airport. They have to be screened, just as a passenger would be screened. So when you're dealing with a live animal, you really have to think about the feeding of that animal, the relief of that animal, the, um, you know, the stress that animals are placed under. So this is our aviary and in transit area. So they're coming off of one flight and going on another. And they get held here to be inspected by Fish and Wildlife, 
CDC if necessary, and U.S. Department of Agriculture. So counting the number of animals coming through here is, is uh, a challenge, um, mostly because we go from very small animals, like think fish or chicks, <laughs> to very large animals such as horses. Horses are much more easy to quantify. Uh, this year, we expect approximately 4,000 horses to come through this facility. So the jet stalls are over here. And those are where three horses are loaded into each stall. They would be placed, a jet stall would be placed on this loader here. And after it's loaded, it gets placed onto our trailers, which are over here. For small animals, we estimate it's somewhere around 10,000 animals per year. And uh, that ranges in size, like I said, from small fish to larger dogs and more exotic animals. Back on the people side of the airport, JFK's passenger terminals are all connected via the airport's 8.1 mile long elevated rail system, the AirTrain. The fully automated driverless system runs 24-7 and consists of three lines that service 10 stations with connections to the NYC transit system. While a rail link to the airport was recommended as early as the late 1960s, the project did not come to fruition until much later, with construction beginning in 1998. The system opened on December 17, 2003, and as of 2019, total ridership was 20.9 million. While the air train can take you to any of JFK's terminals, if you have extra time, Terminal 5 boasts a particularly noteworthy attraction that has, thankfully for us, stood the test of time. So the TWA Hotel is a six and a half acre mixed use facility that's physically located at the center of JFK Airport. It's a ground up rehabilitation of Aero Saarinen's iconic 1962 TWA Flight Center. The building opened May 28, 1962 uh, and operated as an airline terminal uh, up until American Airlines bought TWA in 2001. They found that they could not use the building and they handed the keys back to the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey. And since 2001, the building sat derelict. When we started developing the building, very, very difficult adaptive reuse. Uh, you're, in the middle of a, you're in the middle of a live airport. It's uh, landmarked interior and exterior, and it's a wildly important building. From uh, an architectural standpoint, it was uh, designed and, and built by probably the first Starkitect, uh, Aero Saarinen. Howard Hughes designed the TWA terminal uh, to support the Lockheed Constellation L1649, which happens to be a propeller plane. Um, the jet age came of age at Idlewild Airport in the 1960s, and that brought along uh, jet planes. Flew twice as fast, seated twice as many people, twice as big. The building was functionally obsolete the day it opened on May 28, 1962. When you walk into the building itself, you'll notice a few things. One, there's no columns, and that's because structurally it's a marvel. It's a 66,000 square foot concrete shell, poured concrete, uh, that's held up by four points of contact with the ground. You just would never get that today. Another kind of really unique thing about the building, there is not a straight line in this building. Everything is in completely curved. Third, you'll notice that there is penny tile everywhere, and it's this beautifully articulated penny tile. The grout was labored over. It's a modern marble from a visual standpoint. It's this white concrete palace that you're walking into. So I think from uh, an aesthetic standpoint, it just uh, can't be matched. This building is so important to a lot of different people. As the day winds down, clouds gather overhead and a sudden weather cell envelops the airport. Back in the air traffic control tower at Terminal 1, ramp manager Steve checks on his staff. Mr. Adams says as of 1622, all ramp activity has been suspended. You know, when we get thunderstorms with lightning proximity to the airport, we have to close the ramp, take all our personnel off the ramp, all the ground staff off the ramp. It'll obviously lead to delays in both loading and unloading. 
and it's usually a cascading effect because once you get weather like this, airplanes won't fly, won't fly the approach. So your concern is departures who don't leave, impacting arrivals that won't have gates, but usually the arrivals are going into a hold. Brian, is Aeroflot spinning or still coming in? And the back side of it is, the back side of it is probably over LaGuardia. I mean, this will be over in 10 minutes and then just rain. You know, there are times when we get lines of thunderstorms that stretch from Montreal to Atlanta. There's no way around them. This is a short, confined cell. So if you're actually, you know, 70 miles north of New York, you can get to the back side of the cell and still get here. At the beginning of the pandemic, our airports were down more than 95% in terms of their pre-COVID levels. As of last week, they had recovered to about 50% of pre-COVID levels. But we have kept the airports open during the entire pandemic. And so we're, we're looking forward to a really strong return in the course of the rest of this year. As we transition out of COVID, we're doing everything possible to ensure a safe experience for the passenger, but ensuring that the passenger has the opportunity to experience what they did experience before COVID. JFK is a sprawling complex, and we've only touched the surface here today. Have you been to the airport before? If so, what else would you like to know about how it operates? And if you like this video and have ideas for more original content you'd like to see, or an airport to profile next, feel free to let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.